the video which is still uploading to my computer or uploading from my computer I installed an Android head unit into my little sister's truck I didn't have time to install the backup camera but today I do now instead of just going with your basic stick on or drilling backup camera I've decided to go with something that looks a little bit more OEM because I like making things look OEM in case you haven't noticed now inside here is a tailgate handle off of a, a well for a Ford F-150 truthfully I'm not sure if it'll fit but the Ford Explorer Sport Track does share the same tailgate as the flare side F-150 and I've seen people post on the exact same uh, review of uh, the Amazon review of this item that they've been able to get it to fit onto a 2000 or a Ford F250 as well. So what I'm hoping is that Ford use the same tailgate handle for all their trucks. I'm hoping that's the case otherwise I wasted some money. So I'm gonna pull this thing open. So this right here is the tailgate handle for the truck. It looks similar I'm hoping. Let me get it out of this packaging links in the description for every single item just to make it easier for people who do want to do this themselves now it looks very similar and you'll see that there's no camera right here now the solution to that problem is going to be to buy a camera off Amazon as well and hope it fits in the hole anyway first I'm going to take this out and make sure it matches the, the tailgate of the truck Okay, so this is the original Ford handle that is on the Sport Track, and uh, you'll note that there's no backup camera hole there. Now, this is the one that's for the Ford F-150, which I got off Amazon, and it looks very similar, and I have very high hopes that it'll fit, because it does look almost exactly the same, the size appears to be similar, and if it doesn't fit, I have a feeling that I can cut some stuff or do something and make it fit pretty easily. Now, as far as I know that this as far as I know, this is the handle that came on all Ford Explorer Sport Track. I haven't seen a single Ford Explorer Sport Track with this handle and the backup camera installed. I don't know if it was just never an option or if they built them into the badge or what happened. But I'm very excited to be doing this. In terms of getting the camera into this door this uh, handle, it's actually pretty simple. So this right here is the camera itself, right? So all we need to do is pop this in here it's very simple just slide this two in here I love how that particular dog only starts barking when I start to film something and make sure the back is lined up and then just pop it in simple just like that now all I need to do is go out to the truck, pull the tailgate out, and uh, pop it in. One of this install is going to be pulling out this old uh, handle. Shouldn't be too hard. What I can tell, all you need to do is open this thing up right here, pop that down, and then start pulling out all these little screws. They do appear to be Torx head bolts, or bolts, so let's see if I have the right size. Now it appears it's a T30 driver size. Next, I'll pull this piece out right here, and let's see if I can pop it right off. It appears I can get to here without you pulling it out, so I'm going to try doing that. I just have the thing popped open and being held up by a pry tool. Now, pulling these out are the actual mechanism that open and close the latch now underneath here you can see this pin so you can see that pin right there that'll also need to be removed 
that pin right there. Now next is going to be two bolts to pull this out right here. Our search and I finally found a 10 millimeter socket, but now I need to find a three quarter inch extension. extension. It's a little bit bigger than expected, but should work. Those two are now out. Now what's all I need to do is okay. So now you see the door handle itself and the lock solenoid. Next step is to transplant this lock solenoid into the new door handle. This one also has a pin with it. There's the pin. Now you can see the, uh, or the lock barrel is keyed and it only goes in a specific way just like that to prevent confusion. Now here's a new lock pin going in. Ah, oh, that's actually a lot bigger than you think. So that's in. The next thing you do is to slide it right back in. So I do need to take those handles off after all. So it appears that the latches are working. So next step, the next step now that I have the tonneau cover open, is going to be close it up and make sure everything opens and closes the way it should. So I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way. Handle it in. The next step is going to be to route the wires. Now looking through here, I was trying to figure out the good place, and I was originally going to be using this hole right here, but it's too high up and it's too far away from the pivot point. Luckily, while I was looking at the bottom of the tailgate, I found a hole right there. So I'm going to be routing all my audio, video cabling, and power cabling through that hole. That one right there, and route right up to the camera. It's actually a perfect spot. And then I'm going to route that down. I'm going to have a power cable going to this tail light, and the video cable going underneath the truck into the cab, right there. Very nice and simple. Before I start routing wires is the eight, the video cable itself. Now you'll see there'll be a little red wire and then the black wire that goes to the other end. This red wire is typically used as a reference wire. This tells the radio when the car is in reverse and then it activates the camera. For this particular radio that's not necessary because it is hooked up to the CAN bus system. So the radio knows when the car is in reverse through the actual car's computer itself. It sends a signal to it. So it's, I don't need to worry about wiring a reference wire. I just need to get power from the tail light into the camera. It's amazingly simple. I love it. And if you want to see a video of me hooking up a stereo with a reference wire, that link will be in the description below or at the end of the video. That's the one where I installed the Android head unit doubled in into my mom's Ford Escape Hybrid. Run the wire. I noticed that there was like a little bulkhead inside. So it's not a full pass through. There's small little holes in there that I can route the wire through. So what I ended up coming up with is I got an old coat hanger and we'll bend that up, hook the wires onto it and just drag it through. 
it's going to be easier than trying to fish it on out. And then I'll just uh, hook the audio video cable or the video cable up to that and do the same thing for the power cable. One part of the coat hanger, there's the other. It's going to close this one up. There's the shot right there. Step two is to plug it in here. Up next is the power cable. Okay, so now I'm going to extend the power wire and the ground wire. Run them up to the tail. update. I tied in all the electrical components on the audio video cables for the camera or the video cables for the camera to this side. Thing is I kind of forgot that on this side the exhaust pipe was there. So what I decided to do is follow the wiring for this brake light wiring harness over to this side and uh, follow the main loom over here. Now the problem is you can see down there the main loom goes over the gas tank. Now my arms are amazing things, but they can't go over the gas tank. So what I decided to do was follow it as far as I could to try and get past the suspension components. Oh. Try and get past the suspension components. And then uh, pop into the, the underneath the truck's frame. Problem is, this is the other end of the cable, and this is the back door. So the cable made it as far as the back door, almost to the front door. Almost. Oh, actually a little bit further. So I'm going to go to Fry's, get another one of these uh, video cables, and then some more connectors. Run that into the cab to the radio right there. Hopefully this all works. Okay, so I just got home from Fry's. It's already dark outside, which is less than ideal. But I'm gonna try and run the wires anyway at night. Because this car has to be driven early tomorrow morning. So they didn't have a composite video cable with a male and female end. So I ended up having to get this coupler. RCA to RCA coupler. Truthfully, I'm not too sure about doing this, especially because it's underneath the truck and will probably be exposed to a lot of debris the way I drive and the way my sister drives. But I will be zip tying and electrical taping everything. And I also bought some conduit just to make sure. It has two female ends on it. I'm gonna go on to here. Just like so. On the other end will be a 
another RCA cable. Now I was not able to get just an RCA cable or just a video RCA cable. So what I ended up getting was a full set of RCA cables including the audio cable. Now from what I remember from school these RCA cables should be just the same but I'm going to use a thicker video one anyway. So I'm just going to split them on down the line just like so. And who knows, if I do end up installing the subwoofer, I can always use this cable. And... Plugged in it is. Okay, so now the current plan is to find a way to route that wire up into the engine bay. Once I get into the engine bay, I should be able to get inside. There's the wire down, the hanger down there, and there it is right there. I understand the normal best procedure for this particular circumstance is to drill into the firewall and start a new hole, but I really don't want to drill into this truck. So what I've decided to do is run it through that grommet right there, which you probably can't see. Maybe you can, but you... I've got this white coat hanger right here, run it down to that grommet, oh man, run it down to that grommet down there and pull the audio or the video cable straight through into the firewall. I'm hoping it doesn't damage the cable, but the cable's thick enough, so here's to luck. Let's see if this will work. So here it is from the inside. I mean this both of my cameras, my GoPro and my phone end up dying, so I wasn't able to show in full detail how I did this. Now, I had the uh, video cable running up underneath the frame rail right here, followed the main loom. I went up into the engine compartment behind the rear fender liner, and I used that grommet right back there. You can see the shiny wire. That is the cable, That the video cable, and the other two wires are vacuum lines that go to the climate control system. Now one of those vacuum lines ended up coming out when I was doing the install, so I did have to uh, put it back in, which was a massive pain. But I ended up running the video cable from inside through here and inside to there, which I cannot show you right now because, you know, stuff is in the way. And I don't have the key. Well, I do I have to have the key. But overall, that's about it. 
the installation other than having to go to the store and get parts over and over and over again was not that bad and I am very happy with the fact that I didn't have to cut any grommets I didn't have to drill any holes into the firewall if in reality if we wanted to return the whole thing back to stock put the stock head unit in put the stock camera and or the handle and everything it'd be very easy to do and I'm very happy about that it's very hard to tell it's modified as well and I haven't gotten a chance to actually drive it and do anything because my sister's been using the truck so much. Well, it is her car, but yeah, anyway. But uh, I just thought I'd show you like the view of it, the angles and all that kind of stuff. Because from what I saw in the reviews, a lot of people were a little bit disappointed with the viewing angle of the, the handle. So let me just demonstrate that. Real quick. And the lights do match exactly took me some time to figure out the right color now there's the Android it's not actually going to start up because I don't feel like waiting for it but right there you can see the actual handle it focuses mostly on the hitch area but it does provide enough of a backup view to make sure you don't bump into like a light pole or something. But in terms of using it, you do still need to he rely heavily on your wind mirrors and things. But overall, it's a pretty nice setup. It comes on. It comes on before your Android head unit is fully booted in. So that's about it for the video. If you guys do want to see any more like car related videos, I got some computer videos coming. And uh, that's about it. Just hit subscribe if you want to see some more. Hit like if you like the video. And do whatever else you do on the internet. Have a good one, guys. That's for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while. I got a surprise for you. Project Revolt Part 3 is coming. It's going to be epic. So much has happened since last time.